Hi, my name is Mochan. I work as a data and analytics manager. And in today's video, I'm going to be covering your top data analysis questions from LinkedIn. So without further ado, I'm going to jump in and start with question number one. It's a great idea, Mochan. I have a question. How do you manage your workflow for large data sets and balance technical tasks with non-technical aspects like communication and project management? So this question has two parts, right? The first part is around working with large data sets. And the second part is communicating to non-technical stakeholders. So working with large data sets nowadays, most of the tools that you use, they'll have some built-in engine that will help you to work with large data sets. But I think it's important to define what's a large data set here. So is it anything with 100,000 rows or a million rows or 10 million rows? In my opinion, just as a rule of thumb, for me, anything over a million rows of data is a large data set. And the way I like to work with large data sets is using PySpark in Python. The Spark engine is just so powerful. It processes data really quickly. So that is my preferred way. But like I said, most tools will have some built-in engine and some built-in methods to allow you to work with large data sets. Given the amount of data we produce, we consume, on a daily basis, it's not surprising that there's a lot of tools that can handle large data sets. So around the second part, around balancing the technical tasks with non-technical aspects like communication and uh, project management. So this is very important. Being a data analyst or being any type of analyst really is not just about crunching numbers. So when you work, you'll work with people. And this is the biggest difference between sitting at home and studying on your own and learning the technical tools compared to when you actually go to work, you'll realize that the data analysis bit is only actually a tiny part of your job. At the same time, it's also obviously a huge part of your job, but there's so many other aspects to the job. So the way I do this is that I try and simplify things you cannot oversimplify. So really try to dumb down what you're saying because when you're presenting, for example, it's not about how smart you are, but about how quickly you can present the information in a way so that your audience can understand and digest this information in the quickest possible way. All right, let me move on to the next question. And I'm sure you noticed here, I'm blurring out all of the names because on LinkedIn, you use your real name. So I'm going to keep everyone and all of the questions anonymous here. I also made a similar video around questions on YouTube. And there, I simply read out the handles. Obviously, it's anonymous, so it's different. But anyway, question number two, next question. What type of projects will help you stand out when looking for a role as a data analyst? So try projects that cover the entire life cycle of um, data analysis. So let me try and actually draw this out for you right now. All right, so first and foremost, you'll have to get this data from somewhere. So you could do a project, say for example, on gathering your data. Then once you have your data, it's usually gonna be messy. So it's dirty data. So you could make a project on uh, cleaning data, for example. Once you've done this, you're going to have to analyze your data. So you could make a project on data analysis. And then once you're done with this, you're on to the last step where you're going to have to draw some conclusions or come up with some insights or come up with some recommendations or maybe even some predictions. So there you go. You could make projects around all four of these stages. And I think that would be a pretty good complete portfolio. All right. Next question. What websites are better to showcase your projects outside of GitHub? So my number one and my favorite place to showcase really anything is Notion. You can create websites for completely free of charge. You can host static web pages and it's a no code environment and you really can do whatever you want to. So Notion is built in blocks. It's a note taking tool, but it's built in blocks. So you can include really anything from code, images, pictures, GIFs, videos, whatever you want to. This is what I built my own ultimate data portfolio in. And 
honestly, it's just a fantastic way to display anything. So Notion, that's what I would recommend. And I would also recommend you check out my ultimate data portfolio because I give you all the templates. I give you all the guides on how you can make a portfolio that'll actually make you stand out. Next question, why domain knowledge is important? Resources to improve domain knowledge as a data analyst. Without domain knowledge, you will not be able to solve business problems. So a lot of people put a lot of emphasis on technical tools because I think it's the easiest to learn and it's the most tangible to learn as well because it's either you know a formula or you don't. It's either you know an SQL syntax or you don't. It's either you can create a visualization using a calculated field in Tableau or you cannot. But people don't put enough emphasis on domain knowledge. Without domain knowledge, how do you even identify the critical business problems? not to mention solving those business problems, right? So the way I think about this is that if you're just technical, you're always gonna have to wait for someone else to identify the problem and then tell you how to solve that problem. And then you can go away and you can solve it, but you know, doing some technical things, writing some formulas, honestly, anybody could do it. So this is why domain knowledge is so important and places to learn, obviously this depends on what kind of domain it is. So say, for example, if we're talking about, say, finance, which is the industry and the domain I work in, some great places where I started learning a lot of financial stuff from is uh, Financial Times. For example, you could read it. Investopedia is completely free. I did pass my CFA level one examination. And then I guess I also have a master's degree in finance and economics and a bachelor's in economics. So I do know a thing or two about finance and economics. And honestly, without it, everything would be a lot more difficult. Like if I didn't understand how mortgage products worked, how the economy works, how interest rates and bonds work, everything would just be more difficult because then I go to work, I see a metric, I don't even understand the metric. I have to look it up, understand the metric first and then move on to data analysis. Whereas this way, if someone tells me, you know, interest rates, okay, I know exactly what it means, loan to value, again, I know exactly what it means. No one has to explain that for me or to me. Moving on, next question. Thanks for doing this, Mochan. I do have a couple of questions. What strategies do you use for cleaning and preparing data before analysis? Can you discuss how to effectively communicate data insights to non-technical stakeholders? So the second part of this question I already covered, this is communicating data insights to non-technical stakeholders. Basically, simplify, oversimplify. Make it as simple as possible. And when you feel like you can no longer make it any more simple, that's probably where you should start and that's probably what you should explain to your stakeholders. But to the first part of this question, so what do I do for data cleaning and preparing my data for analysis? Depends, right? Depends on the data set. But some really basic things or some really generic things you should do, check the shape of the data set, how many rows, how many columns, what are the data types, any missing values, are you planning on doing something with the missing values, imputations, are you planning on removing them, why? Are you planning on replacing them with the mean, the median, the average, or some other imputation method, okay? Why? How frequently is this data updated? What's the purpose of this analysis? How frequently are you going to have to clean this data and prepare this data? Where is the data set coming from? Where is the data set sourced from? So these are the kind of questions that I'm trying to answer when I'm cleaning my data and preparing my data. The next question is simple. Where is the best place to start? So start with the basics. A lot of people jump in and pick up a tool straight away, and they try and run with it, which I don't think is the right approach. Data analytics and the field of data analysis is extremely varied. So there are so many tools, so many concepts, so many technologies you could learn. So first and foremost, try and identify what you actually wanna learn within data analysis. Do you wanna become a business analyst using data analysis skills, or do you wanna become a proper, like, full-on data analyst who just crunches the numbers and everything is about data analysis? Do you want to use data analysis just to get some other analyst job, financial analyst, supply chain analyst? They're all going to require different tooling and different skills along the lines. And if you need a resource to start your journey, then 
you should really check out my ultimate data roadmap because it contains all of the technical skills. But at the same time, and this is the extra, I give you the domain knowledge parts as well. There's also different modules and lessons on soft skills, communication skills, stakeholder management, statistics, and domain knowledge within retail, finance, healthcare, for example. So I give you practical things, not just Excel, learn this, SQL, learn this. So make sure to check it out if you want to. I think it's a great place to start. Next question. Hey, Mo Chen, what happens if you forget a certain SQL syntax in a technical interview? What do you eventually do? First and foremost, I think with AI on the rise and the fact that you know, nobody codes under pressure at a work, really. You get to Google stuff, search it on Stack Overflow, or nowadays use ChatGPT or, you know, whatever built-in AI tool your company already uses. I don't think it's fair that you have to memorize the code because, to be honest, I forget the code all the times, and I'm sure a lot of people who already work in data fields, they forget the code too. That's why we have repositories, and that's why we have all these tools. Google, Stack Overflow, AI, ChatGPT, Perplexity, whatever that tool is. So I don't think it's fair when they put you under pressure because I think it's about learn how to learn. They should just say that you can use AI or whatever tool you would actually use at work to solve that problem and then use those tools and solve that problem. So just because you forget the syntax a little bit, you know, it's... I, I don't think it's the right way. But let's say you already forgot the syntax. What can you do? Well, there's not much you can do, right? Just move on to the next question and the next time you will remember the syntax. Sometimes I feel like people just want to put you under pressure. So don't panic. Just focus on the next question and then um, don't worry about it too much because you'll get a, an interview after this as well. And then the next interview and then sooner or later, you're going to get so comfortable that you will definitely know that specific SQL syntax. Next question, how to get your first job as a data analyst when you have no work experience? So I made numerous videos on this and I'll try and put a link or two to the videos that I think are most relevant in the description below. First of all, you need to get qualified, you need to be credible, so that is going to be either through a university degree or some certification. Then you're going to have to learn the necessary skills, then you'll need a great portfolio, a great resume, and then your portfolio obviously needs to be filled, out, uh, filled up with great portfolio projects. And then once you start landing those interviews, you'll need to do well enough. So that would be the very, very simple way to do it. And like I said, I made numerous videos on, on well, any part of this process. I have my ultimate data roadmap where you can learn anything data analysis related, including non-technical stuff like domain knowledge, communication skills, stakeholder management, how to write a good resume, all that stuff. I have my ultimate data portfolio where I have you covered on anything portfolio related. I also have a bunch of projects out there that you can watch on YouTube. So I'll put the links to all of those in the description below. If you check that out and if you study those, that would be a really good way to get a job as a data analyst, even if you have no work experience. And last but not least, what is the future of programming in data analysis given the rapid rise of AI? Should someone still learn to code? Yes, you should absolutely still learn to code. Think about it this way. Who would you rather hire? Or who do you think would be the better candidate? The person who can prompt the AI tools but doesn't know how to code or the person who knows how to code and knows how to prompt the AI tools? I learned coding from scratch. So I can guarantee you that I can prompt the tools better and I'll know the possibilities of what you can actually do with coding way better compared to someone else who literally doesn't know how to code. They know how to prompt the AI tools, but how would you even know what questions to ask? Or even if you get some output, would it even be meaningful? How would you fine tune the output? Or how would you fine tune your prompt, for example? And the other day, actually, I had to code a lot of things in Python, and I had to clean a lot of data. And it's been a while since I coded in Python, but it wasn't a problem because I knew exactly what I was looking for. I knew the capabilities and I, Sometimes, yeah, sure, I forgot the syntax, but that's completely normal to forget the code. I'm not about memorizing the code. I know exactly what I want to do with coding and how I can achieve it and what 
libraries and packages I need to use within Python, and then what functions I need to use within those packages to be able to clean my data in Python quickly. Someone who doesn't know how to code and someone who didn't learn how to code would definitely not be able to do this data cleaning exercise as quickly and efficiently as myself, for example. So I would, yes, absolutely still encourage you to learn to code. AI is just another tool. And if you actually are good at the foundational data analysis skills and knowledge, then with AI, you'll be able to produce, uh, you know, a hundred times better and quicker and more efficient output. Whereas someone else who's not that good, yeah, sure, they can do something. But at the end of the day, it's all about competition, isn't it? So if you really want to do this for a living, you should learn. And don't be lazy and don't just prompt it because prompting is easy. But using prompting to actually solve business problems, trust me, it's a lot harder. And with this said, this was the last question. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, you should um, probably check out my website at mochan.info. You can get access to my newsletter, all of my products, the data analysis bundle. Like I said, I have you covered with my roadmap, with my projects, with my portfolio. So please check it out if you liked this video. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching today.